y'all out here for, man? What you here for, huh? Does your life matter? Does your life matter? You ready for this? You ready to take control? Are you giving them control or are you taking control? If you see me sweating, I am here in Iowa uh, with, with my... Uh, Family, I have family out here in Iowa, and man, it is it is muggy in Iowa. So if you've ever lived in the Midwest or been in the Midwest, it's uh, not the nice Colorado dry heat, but it's a beautiful place. I got some nice woods behind me, and I'm really really excited to be here. But anyway, there's just a few things that I wanted to uh, mention to you as we're about ready to get started. Again, you probably already know this. Since you saw the emails going out from me, we're going to be hearing from Justin Johannes from uh, Taylor Morrison, Vice President of Construction there. He's going to be telling us all about his career path, how he got interested in construction, what he's been doing in construction, what he does right now, why you should think about a career in construction and try to help you as much as he can and as we can in getting uh, to your career in construction. Uh, Justin, let me just make sure you are unmuted, and do you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. All <laughs> right. It's great to have you, Justin. Thank you so much for, for coming on the line. We are just honored to have you here, um, and to also, I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen here to make things a little more simple. So uh, I, it's just an honor to, to have you here and to have you a part of what we're doing here. We just, but Justin, before I, before I get into, into the, um, before I get into the interview, I, uh, oh, do you, do you guys still hear music? I heard some people, okay, music's done. I had some questions about music coming and I just now saw them. So music, oh, okay, <laughs> glad you can hear me. Uh, anyway, Justin, before I dive into questions for you, um, I want to uh, just just kind of introduce our relationship with you. Taylor Morrison has been just a great partner of the Colorado Home Building Academy. As I already mentioned, they're doing this pop-up training here next week. They're going to be doing it again later in the summer. They did it last summer. Um, and uh, Justin, you, you individually, you personally have just been a great partner to the Colorado Home Building Academy. We've just really enjoyed uh, having you be a part of it and sharing your expertise uh, in the in, in, in construction and in management. Um, and I know that we have a lot of students on the line that are future construction managers, future business owners, future trade professionals. We have some of the most um, some of the most optimistic and and um, and aggressive uh, individuals that come to our school. There's plenty of them that aren't familiar with construction at all. They may have not worked in that in high school or not grown up in a construction home, and they may even be in the middle of their career looking at a career shift. Um, and so we're excited to have some of those very individuals on the line right now. But thank you so much for being here. I've chatted a lot, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hand it on over to you. Justin, could you just kind of introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about your career path, how you got into construction, what you've done, and, and where you are right now? Absolutely. And, and thanks for having me. Um, can anyone uh, mute Brian now? Since he talks so much. Can we do that? <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, so I got into construction as a punishment, actually. Uh, my dad worked uh, in the, he was a general contractor in Nebraska. And, uh, you know, one of the things he was passionate about was getting me to go work with him. And I would get in trouble uh, when I was around six. And so he dragged me to the job site and make me help. Uh, typically push a broom, pick up nails, stuff like that when you're just a kid. So that's how I got into it. My dad was a general contractor. He's, his specialty was cabinetry, um, creating it from scratch. And uh, a lot of cabinet manufacturers these days can outpace and outperform him. So he is no longer in, in, uh, in the business. However, um, it's, it's, uh, I started at a very young age at six, uh, worked for him. Um, by the time I was 16, I was helping run crews for him, uh, doing um, from Nebraska. I'll say it a hundred times. I always do, but uh, I just got an Nebraska, opportunity to drive yeah. through Nebraska, so I'm familiar. That's not an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sentence. But uh, <laughs> but we uh, we 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 had the only 
10 foot forms in the Western Panhandle in Nebraska for, for foundation. So we traveled around quite a bit of the Western Panhandle uh, standing up foundation walls. I, uh, I started running crews then when I was about 16. Um, and it's not something I really wanted to do. I went into went to college after high school, went into uh, computer information systems or pro, uh, computer programming. And uh, my professor and I didn't get along and I didn't realize he was the dean to the uh, university. So we didn't, we butted heads. And uh, I, I, you know, a couple failed paths, right? I, I tried to do uh, telecommunications management, setting up Cisco systems and then industrial distribution, which uh, sells, you're basically a salesman for screws and nuts and everything in the construction industry. Mm. Um, wound up in construction in large part because I needed to pick a major because I was uh, wasting my own money in school, not uh, doing what I wanted to do. So I uh, jumped into construction and uh, from there it just took off. I interviewed with a company called Syntex Homes. They're no longer in Colorado. They're owned by Pulte. And I got hired on as an intern, not for them. And so I, uh, I worked for about six months, uh, satisfied my internship, was able to graduate, and they brought me on full time as a superintendent. Um, from that point on, it was, it was just uh, trying to outwork. You know, one of the things my dad taught me was uh, there's always something to do. Uh, whether you're picking up nails, picking up trash, doing whatever, never, ever, ever stop moving. And that's exactly what I did. Um, when I started managing, uh, managing on the, on the new home build. And so I uh, worked as a construction manager, worked my way up to a area manager there at Syntex relatively quickly. And then the bottom fell out of the market. And I, uh, I was playing, I'm, I'm telling, you'll see my career path here. You'll, you'll kind of start pushing some stuff together, but I was playing softball with uh, some guys that uh, one of the guys I built his house for, he invited me to play. And then I was, uh, there was a commercial company, Brickman Constructors, that uh, needed needed someone like me. They had a large book of business, um, doing a lot of tilt ups, Home Depots, Lowe's, uh, stuff like that. And so I got pulled into the I got pulled into the commercial side of things uh, because the, I was tired of laying off my friends. Mm -hmm. And so uh, worked there for about a year and a half, and then uh, all their work dried up. Uh, financing went away projects were canceled, put on hold. Um, then I started working for myself. I, I ran my own company for about a year and a half, two years, building decks, finishing basements, uh, did some stuff with, uh, with some safety companies, uh, from ball arrest systems. I worked on the, some high rises down in Denver, installing safety systems for window washers, uh, um, the maintenance crews, and then uh, also in the Venetian in Vegas. Um, got to gotta work there, which wow. working behind the scenes in Vegas, that, it's, it's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, then then I uh, you know one of the guys that I worked with at Syntex and then, then Syntex bought out uh, got bought out by Pulte pulled me over as a superintendent or referred me to be a superintendent at Pulte and so I, I was working at a 55 and older community up in Anthem which is off Highway 7 and 25 worked there for again about a year and a half two years and I was bored um, I got really good at playing foosball um, and uh, it's, it's really good at playing foosball is probably what what I did most there <laughs> <laughs> so it was just slow and we had too many people on site so I uh, mm -hmm. I went to work for a restoration company and worked there for a couple of years to where I was pulling in uh, uh, the Occupy Fort Collins burnt down a building in Fort Collins so I rebuilt that mm -hmm. uh, in about a year and a half two years learned a lot from uh, the commercial side working for Brinkman worked a lot from uh, from from there as well, again, just putting your head down and going hard. And uh, I could go into deeper detail on these, but I don't think it satisfies what this call is meant for. But uh, I uh, got out of there in large part because uh, you're chasing smoke, you're chasing disaster once you get done with the big projects. And uh, you're, you're part of the crew that helps clean up uh, uh, after there's a death and the coroner takes his stuff away. Uh, we're, we're left with picking up the rest. Right. So I didn't really want to do oh, that man. very much. Not the kind of thing you expect when you're getting into construction, I would imagine. No, no, it's, it's not. So I got pulled into uh, KB Home, worked there for three years, uh, started as a superintendent, and uh, worked my way up to a regional construction manager, and then uh, got pulled over to Taylor Morrison a little over four years ago, and uh, at the time, it was the worst decision I ever made. Um, mm. 
place was a train wreck and uh we we as a group have collectively made this into one of the better divisions for taylor morrison so we're constantly mm. out there on uh on the things that they they what matters most to them that's uh keeping the customers happy cycle time etc cetera, etc cetera. so um came over as a as an area manager and uh worked my way up to vice president here so all right um, all at the uh, age of 39 today so it's uh been a wild ride and uh, yeah. it's been fun but it's you know a couple things that uh, I can attribute to my my father teaching me and and the, one of the things with construction is it is very contingent on father teaching son teaching son teaching kid you know so on and so forth and then when there was a downturn that hit it, it gapped out so a lot of the people that were in the industry have left mm -hmm. um, so there's a there's a gap a talent gap <laughs> And we have a lot of new people coming in on the backside of the industry uh, with a very limited experience, a lot of different ways of thinking, which is which is kind of cool. But yeah. uh, they, the little things that they don't know, I've had to teach uh, trimmers how to cope a corner. Um, yeah. I've had to teach uh, cabinet installers how to score plywood so it doesn't splinter uh, every time they cut it with a saw. So those little things that I learned from my father really have helped right. me in my career. and. Uh, and uh, just training those around me and so um yeah that's that's the that's the very long story um mm -hmm. i can actually talk more about it but uh it's been a fun fun ride well that's great uh, that's <laughs> what a great introduction thank you so much for that that's really helpful just a, a brief com just sideline here everybody if, if uh, you are wanting to ask any questions um feel free to uh feel free to use the chat box um and some i see some individuals have already uh, found the chat box and made use of that if we have time toward the end here i will open up your microphones so you can just ask some questions directly and then there's also been some questions submitted um when you signed up for this class and i'll pull some from some questions for that and i of course uh, have some questions of my own um so let me see here all right, I just gotta just gotta play with my microphones here and here and there when I get some feedback and uh, and mute some folks. But but uh, anyway, so again, feel free to use that chat box, Justin. That's really helpful background. So it sounds like just uh, first of all, I wanted to mention before I forget, you said you're 39. Yes. Yeah, you got me beat by just one year. I'm thir I'm 38. I'm well, not by much. I'm gonna be 39 here in July 15. So it's right it's right around the corner. But I am hanging on the 38 as tight as. <laughs> So hang on, uh, hang on for your dear life. <laughs> right, thirty nine is just way too frighteningly close to uh, to forty. But anyway, you know it's funny when you say you say that that uh, being thirty nine, I am still the kid in the industry. I look around the table um, ah. at my ops team, and uh, I am I am the the youngest the youngest one there for the most part, and uh, it, it's been that way for quite some time. And you know, when we say that there's a talent gap, it's not uh, it's not just with the trades, it's with everybody that was in the industry. And so, um, mm -hmm. the average the average worker on site right now is about 55 years old. So wow. for me, coming in and being wow. a child and trying to teach teach uh, grown adults how to do things differently, they're apprehensive at first. But since I've uh, I've had a history of working with my hands and knowing what I'm doing. Uh, they listen. Inspectors listen uh, more intently when you speak. Uh, the uh, workers on site know that you've swung a hammer, and uh, it's 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 important to to have those things in your back pocket. So it sounds like there is a lot of opportunity with the right training and the right connections. There, there's a lot of opportunity in the industry. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I applaud. You know, I've, I've been part of the Colorado or the yeah Colorado Home Builders Academy for quite some time. Uh, just helping doing things like this and one of the things I really like seeing is the mindset of the folks getting in that really want to one learn a trade be really good at that but then network themselves to a point where they they can uh, create a following of theirs and start up their own business uh, take night school classes get that business degree and uh, you can you can do a lot of damage in this market, when you have your own business and a team behind you that, uh, that knows how to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah, oh great, that's good, very nice. Well, and it, 
has it been a bit of a challenge? You had mentioned that the industry is very, has been very used to someone say growing up in construction, learning from their father. Um, you know, that, that leaves of course an open door of opportunity on one hand. Uh, but does, is it also, does it, does it change the management approach to, to have to say train individuals on what used to be just assumed knowledge? Uh, yeah, you know, they, they have a saying, you know, that common sense ain't too common anymore. And that's something that you have to fight in the field uh, is just is the patience part of it and showing them the right way and then showing mm. them again. You know, it's uh, my, my dad was, uh, he would rip the tool out of my hand and just do it for me. And that's <laughs> how I know you're And yeah. I'm sure some, some of you are thinking of your parents or somebody that does that to you as well. Yeah. Um, it's super annoying, but <laughs> so having that patience and being able to just, uh, being able to show people how and train them up. Training is the biggest thing. Networking yourself and training is very important to, uh, to develop a following and, and to, mm. to help yourself. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's good. Oh, my dad used to try, he took automotive and Votech and he's not in automotive. He's in, he's an upper level management in, in transportation, but he used, since he took automotive and Votech, he thought that I could learn if I would just hold the lamp while yeah. he worked on the engine and that I would just be interested uh -huh. in what he was doing. But I wasn't interested. I'm bored out of my uh -huh. mind. But uh, you learn a lot of cuss words that way. That's about it. <laughs> right. You sure do. <laughs> oh, that's great. Good. What would you say? Um, so, let me, I just want to make sure I get this question in. We've got some questions rolling in. I got a bunch that were submitted before we even started here today. And I want to get to some of those, but what, so you've told us some about your, your path into construction. You mentioned it was kind of a, a punishment at first, and there was some other directions you attempted to go before getting back in construction. Now that you've done it for a while, you've got yourself to upper levels of leadership there. Uh, what are some things you wish you knew? On, on day one or toward the beginning of your career that you'd like to, and just some, some cheap wisdom you like to impart yeah. to everyone who's thinking about it. Yeah, um, you know, Spanish is number one. You wanna, <laughs> she could learn Spanish. Learn Spanish, you, yeah. You can communicate with your team. Um, but the, some of the intangibles or some of the things that I, I didn't have, uh, and I had, I had a pretty good grasp on when I came out of school and got into the field, what, what those things needed to be. And so uh, when I was in school, a lot of people that were taking the same, uh, same degree I was, they got into, uh, they were working for different trades um, around town, building decks, finishing basements, stuff like that. Um, I took a different route and was a waiter at a restaurant. Uh, it was the only, it was back before every fast food joint was open at night. And so we were the only game in town at night, which was really nice. And so I really mm -hmm. learned how to navigate uh, with customers, um, you know, you have the the church crowd that comes in on Sunday. You got the mm -hmm. the uh, guys that are coming in, and all they want is coffee because they're studying in the back in the back corner. Uh, you got the disgruntled customers. You got happy customers, and you're trying to get uh, tips out of them. And mm -hmm. so I learned how to treat people really well in that industry, yeah. and then transitioning into construction that worked out very well for me as well. Um, one thing that I didn't realize coming into it is how important your word is when you tell somebody you're going to get something done. And you can, if you are the type of person that says, I'm going to do something and don't do it, uh, mm. you're going to have a really rough time in this industry. And so if you, if you can continue to uh, keep your word, do the noble, the right thing, when, even when nobody's looking, you'll continue to get uh, you continue to succeed in this industry. Not only, and you have so many different customers. Not only do you have the uh, the people that are buying the home, you got the people that are working on the home. You got internal customers, which are going to be your uh, your uh, people that are in office, uh, secretaries, municipalities. Everyone you have to treat equally and nicely, no matter what. And uh, that's, that's that's very important jumping into it because you know, and it all comes back around. So that first person that I dealt with, you know, as a permit tech that, that maybe I, I got a little frustrated with and maybe I said something I shouldn't have. Now they're the mm. person that, that's the city now that I'm really relying on. So those are the things you, you just got to remember. The eyes are always watching you and even more. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's, that's such helpful advice. And I think maybe in, in, of those, in those areas of, of work where it's maybe assumed that interpersonal skills or just, just that character development is not uh, as necessary because you don't think of construction as being um, 
something that's super interactive. Mm-hmm. Um, but but uh, but how how important that is in every in every really in every industry, but certainly this one. Yeah, it's very interactive, and you know mm-hmm. as well as I know that everyone has a brother, sister, cousin, mother, dad, whatever that has done it, and they do it better than you, and you're doing it wrong. And so you need to be able to talk to them about, you know, this is why this is the right way. We need to be informed, and yeah. never, never, never stop. You know, we we do stuff with our guys where we're, uh, you know, continued education can be any way. Uh, it can be gathered any different way. There's uh, there's uh, Linda Learning on LinkedIn to where you can learn different things uh, online. You can you can read books to further your uh, your development. But there's just so many different avenues you can do. You just can't stop swimming. You've got to keep going and keep learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's one of the th- one of the first things that we teach even our, our in our high schoolers in our high school apprenticeship is is teamwork and working together. Um, mm-hmm. It's like this is a job that you're going to be working with your hands. It doesn't mean you're not working with people. You're going to be working very closely with people, yeah. and you need to be able to work together. That's great. Shifting gears a little bit, I wanted to highlight a question that came in from Lisa Marie, and this is going to be relevant to a lot of uh, individuals who take our training. She says, "What suggestions do you have for someone trying to move from the restaurant industry to the construction industry?" Um, she's specifically interested in being an electrical apprentice, but she doesn't have any, any knowledge there. Um, you know, is it good to gain industry knowledge before appro- uh, uh, pursuing an apprenticeship? Um, and then also, um, she said, I will work with anyone, push myself even more. How do I showcase these facts on paper? How do I convince an employer to take a chance, you know, when she doesn't have any background? And that's actually trying to tack on to that. Uh, there's lots of students who are coming from a completely different industry. Uh, in some cases, actually coming from upper levels of leadership in different industries and really just fascinated by building and want to get into the building industry. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a risk for them. It's a big career shift for them. Um, and there's maybe some hesitancies about uh, finding the right opportunity. What, what, rec- what recommendations would you have for that person? Well, you're gonna, we're all going to make a lot of the wrong moves. So you need to make, look for somewhere that's going to appreciate you and what you, what you can bring to the table. So coming from in, uh, a restaurant, if you're, uh, if you're on the front lines with the, with the people, that's one thing. If you're in back kitchen, it's going to be a little bit different uh, approach that you're going to have to take. But, you know, I would just, uh, uh, there's this book that we've been reading. It's called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Um, mm-hmm. He's an FBI nice. negotiator type of guy. And so what, uh, what he did because he wanted to get on this elite, elite team, is he went straight to the uh, straight to the top and said, "Hey, what do I need to do to uh, get this position?" And she said, "You got to work the suicide helpline and talk people off the ledge for like six months." So he did just that, and he came back six months later, said he did it, and got got the job over some qualified people in large part because no one ever does what they are what someone says for them to do. So, <laughs> So if you uh, reach out to the owner, reach out to the crews and just, Hey, I want to do this. Um, Can I shadow you? Can I, can I, uh, can I do, you know, can I pick up your tools at the end of the day? Can I sweep up Mm -hmm. for you? You know, find a way in and just, it'll continue to grow. It's like planting a seed. You're not going to get the fruit at first. You got to water it. You got to care for it. And this is, this is just that you got to stick your neck out there and it's going to be uncomfortable. It really will. That's but if they take a advice. chance on you, they take a chance on you, they're going to have that in their back pocket. And you're going to have that in yours. And you're going to work very well together. Very nice. Become comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yep. As some of the best advice that I have I personally, personally heard. And you're going to want to quit when you feel, when you feel that resistance oh, initially. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Good. On a somewhat similar note, this is coming from Sheila. Uh, She says, is it harder for women to find employment after finishing schooling than it is for men? Um, And uh, just kind of, you could address kind of women entering into the industry. We see more of that. Obviously, it hasn't been a lot um, up until recently. I think in the actual building, hands-on building process, it's about at 1% in the whole industry. It's about eight or 9%. What what would you you have to say to women who want to enter the, the industry? Um, is it harder? I, 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 I don't know. I'm not a woman and I've never been through those things. So I can't, I can't put myself in those shoes, but from what I see, um, there's different companies that value people differently. So to speak on that is that, uh, 
yeah, you will probably have uh, some hurdles that you'll have to cross. We have, uh, we have uh, three women in the field. Our division president is female as well. Uh, she's also our area president because we're looking for a division president right now. Um, but, uh, but with that, it's, uh, you have a long line of stereotypes that were laid before you that you have to overcome. And it takes mm. persistence and it takes, uh, it takes the willingness for that person to want to change in some cases. For instance, we have, a, have one, of our, uh, one of our superintendents up north and she was in there uh, for the uh, orientation, which is essentially you, the home is done and she's going to walk you through and show you around the house at, the, at this, that, and the other. This is how all this stuff works. So the homeowner shows up, they introduce each other, and then the homeowner leaves, calls down to the sales office and said, get the cleaner out of here and bring my superintendent over. <laughs> so and that kind of stuff happens. And, yeah. it, uh, and it's, it's, it's difficult. Again, I've never been in that position. And I had a very mm. similar reaction to, to you there, Brian. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, like, that's, that's awful. But yeah. it happens. Um, I have a, a war a, one of my the warranty managers is female as well, and uh, uh, you go to a fifty five and older community, and she doesn't know anything about construction, right? Because that's not her place. And so mm. it's uh, it, it takes continued reinforcement on my end. And what my job now is to support my team and support those team members. And so when those things happen, I step in and uh and talk talk those things and so that's that those are examples that i see uh in my position now but i can tell you that i am seeing more and more females out in the field framing plumbing trimming doing all the things um that uh, that require to build a home and it's more and more uh you know i, I met with the we're doing some repairs up at, a, at one of our northern communities and I met with the a roofing company and the owner gets out of her truck wearing a cowboy hat and she's a lady and I, that's, that's I, I now know two roofing contractors that are ladies it's awesome you continue to see yeah. it to grow and spread and so yeah so the more that the more we keep doing this the more that the, we're going to diversify uh, our, our employees and our employment and it's, it's just going to get better and mm -hmm. it's, so it's, it's that i don't know that's that's my take on it so yeah I really appreciate the women who are in the industry. We, we have a growing population of, of those who are female who are entering into our training. While the industry is between one and 9%, uh, women in the industry, our, our school tends to be between 20 and 30%, um, and that's a growing population. I know that the women who have gotten to the industry have all faced some of the stories that you just shared. Um, and have, and, or, or, you know, sometimes overtly spoken, sometimes just a vibe uh, that's on the, that's on the field um, that they pretty consistently feel. And I appreciate those of you who are going into it, knowing that you're going to face some of that, but, but please do for the sake of all of us, contribute your time and talent to that and be able to, um, as you're feeling those, those, it was those kind of situations come up. I know it's going to be difficult, but I appreciate you um, and the growing population that we have in both in our training and, and on the field in general that I see, see growing into that. It's a great thing. And so just to speak on that, you're going to, it's a closed minded industry for, in a lot, for a lot of cases. And so when that average age is mm -hmm. 55, go back 55 years from now and they're uh, back in time. And you're, you're in the mid sixties when some of these people were born. I hope that's good math. Um, but mid sixties when these people were born and they were raised by people that were born in the forties and thirties. And so mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, it's going to take generations to filter this stuff out. But the, what we can do as just individuals is raise our children, right. Uh, parent them correctly um to to work out some of those things because it's going to take generations to I, I hate saying it like this but just to die out until you get uh, mm -hmm. you get to get to where i think we're all trying to achieve or get to mm -hmm. right now so mm -hmm. yeah yeah thank you i appreciate that uh for uh, a upside to the industry experiencing the the, the labor shortage is the, the need to learn these things so mm -hmm. um and suggest accordingly so Great. 
uh, from Margarita here. She says, what are, what are the biggest challenges that you have faced during your career? Um, I would say some of the biggest challenges I've faced are people doing the wrong thing and knowing about it and then having to make those tough decisions, uh, either stopping work, redoing work the right way. Um, because sometimes people will cut corners not knowing that they're cutting a corner. Uh, sometimes people will cut corners because they are not ethically sound people. Mm -hmm. So trying to get everyone to see uh, your colors and to, to do the right thing when nobody's looking, that integrity piece mm -hmm. is really tough to mm -hmm. come across. And when you find those people, uh, you hold latch onto them. Um, and make sure that you keep them happy. So yeah, I think that's, that's been the hardest, you know, the, the labor, the labor thing for us has, uh, has not been as difficult for us as, as some, some other builders. We've developed a very good reputation that we take care of our trades. We take care of our employees and we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing all the time. And that's a, uh, that's a, you have to be on 24 seven. You can't have a bad day. <laughs> And so uh, you got to make sure that you're, you're keeping those around you happy. Yeah. What you're just saying there leads into another question that, that uh, Margaret asks actually as well. And she says, what sets Taylor Morrison apart? You talked about there was kind of a rebuilding process for the, for the company here. Um, and, and so, so how did, so as a company, what sets Taylor Morrison apart? You already addressed a bit of that, just, just what you said, but also on a personal level, as you're bringing yourself to the industry, um, maybe, maybe let's say someone's interviewing for a position uh, at Taylor Morrison, how do you set your apart? I know there's two questions there. So, so how do you, uh, so what, what, what's special about Taylor Morrison and, and someone's going to be interviewing for Taylor Morrison, what, what do they need to be, what would you like to see them bring to the table? Yeah, that's, that's good. So uh, I absolutely love working here and it's, it's very difficult to say that, um, or not say that, I guess, when you work for the company, right? Because Big Brother's always looking over your shoulder, but um, you know, I, one of the things I really enjoy here is, uh, is number one, our, our CEO, uh, Cheryl Palmer, she's, uh, she is honest, she has a lot of integrity, and she'll shoot it straight. Now, she is the only female CEO in all of the public traded companies, uh, home builders right now. So um, she has a pretty good voice on the street, uh, Wall Street, and uh, that trickles down to the management underneath her and then the management underneath that. As far as interviewing, um, you know, when you guys go and sit down for an interview, and I've sat on some of these panel interviews with the Colorado Home Building Academy before, attitude is what stands out. Attitude mm. will always separate you from your competitor. I have never been the most qualified. I have never, I mean, I was, in high school, I was a D student. In college, I was a C student. And mm. my attitude and my daily push uh, set me apart from my competitors so it. it's good you can, yeah you can do that too but it just takes you gotta have that attitude if you go in there with a bad attitude no one will ever hire you hmm. that's good really good uh someone uh, else uh this was from duncan he said is there any uh, technology or field uh, trade that is changing the way construction is done so what kind of progression do you see in technology and trades yeah uh, so that's a uh, so I went to the, uh, oh, what the heck is it? The, it's called IBS, which is just an unfortunate acronym. International <laughs> Builder Show. Yeah. In, the Las uh, Vegas show. Yeah. In Vegas. Yeah. And so yeah. you walk through there and it's at the, uh, at the expo center and there are so many cutting edge new things that, uh, that you see out there and you get into a, uh, you, get, you get back home, you're all charged. And you start talking about these things and you realize that it's just a very uh, headstrong, we've done it this way for so long, industry and mm. we're not going to change. Now, uh, you do see smart homes starting to become a thing. And uh, you see, uh, you know, Google and Apple are starting to partner with some builders uh, so that they can have smart homes. Now, there's, uh, there's I, 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 uh, I wrote a paper on this uh, about five years ago on how I think that's not a good idea, but I'm not going to get into that. But you have, uh, you have that as, as probably the next big thing that's really going to blow up in, in new homes or new construction. Um, 
energy rating to make sure that the, you know, you're building the homes tight and the testing behind that is something that has been new in the last 10 years. That's not going away. You have the IECC, the International Energy Code, uh, Compliance Code. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that's uh, taking precedent in the houses now. So um, that's, that's, that's important. And uh, there's a lot of different things that we're doing differently than I was doing just a few years ago. And we're, uh, we're putting foam in different areas. We're insulating the homes differently and making them tighter, um, which, is, which is a lot of fun. Some builders yeah. are dealing with uh, movable walls inside the house. So a convertible space that you could have. Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, wow. it's, it's a, it's a unique industry that uh, doesn't change mm -hmm. well, but when they find something, they grab onto it and run. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Like it. We've got time for maybe just another question or two. Um, and let me, let me take a look here. Natalie says at... we need to be nice to the permit people. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. So Natalie also asked, what, what, uh, who, who would you say the industry most needs right now? So if someone's bringing their skills and backgrounds to the table, um, what are the kind of people that, that you're looking for? You mentioned things already when it comes to character and and attitude or anything else you want to add there so yeah that character and attitude and so um there, there's some builders out there and so uh, again home building is now my my first and foremost i've done the commercial i've done the i've done the, the restoration side but when it comes to home building um diversity is really what we need and something that we mm. struggle with as an industry as a whole now in this mm -hmm. industry, and, and I kind of clued you in a little bit earlier if, when I was kind of t telling you about my, my career path. I have interviewed not knowing who's on the other side of the table one time in my career, and I've had several jobs. Now that's, once you get into the industry and you start making a name for yourself, uh, people want you and pull you in. Um, so so when, you, when, you, when you come in, um, and you, you just kind of sit around the table, quite frankly, in this industry, um, as far as management's concerned, and it's changing, but a lot of them look just like me. And we need more diversity, uh, females, more uh, ethnic diversity out, out in the field, um, because there's different ways of doing things. And if we just did it my way from what I've been, been trained and taught, then, then we're never gonna evolve. So yeah. I think I think the diversity is, is the biggest thing that the, that this industry lacks and yeah yeah well, that's great I we are unfortunately going to have to wrap we've got some great questions coming in and some more that came in yesterday but um, just to just to uh, just to kind of button this up we're in the middle of COVID nineteen pandemic we know that that changes hiring um, someone had put the question in there are you are you currently hiring uh, as far as getting in with Taylor Morrison what do you recommend. So we, uh, we post all of our listings on, you know, it's funny. We have, uh, we have people that try to just drop off the resumes or they, they want to come in. It's still a very old school industry uh, in, in that regard. But the best way to do it is just to go, to go to the webpage. And a lot of places have that career path. And you can, you can search by uh, location and it'll, it'll pop up what, what we're looking for. So. Um, as far as for us, you know, we're looking for division president. If anybody wants to be division president, I got posted on LinkedIn. Um, we also have our warranty, a warranty rep that we're trying to fill right now. Um, um, and I think that's pretty much it. But, you know, being working for a home builder, there's so many different avenues that, uh, that are part of, of building a house. You have a team that buys out materials for the home. That's your purchasing team. And, uh, you know, that's the very important role within the company to make sure that you're building the home with the right product and it's they're procuring it or getting it to the job site in a timely fashion and then we're, we do large national deals to buy down prices um, and so it, it takes a lot of work to do that especially when you have a lot of different plan sets you have a, we have an architect that works here that helps develop our, our plan sets we have a sales team um, that there's usually two people on the sales floor at every one of our communities. And we have uh, have sales leadership for that as well. And then coordinators mm -hmm. for them. Uh, our, our permit team that uh, works with starts and closings. Uh, we have closing coordinators that work with the banks. Um, we have a finance department that uh, works on getting, getting the loans put together. 
and uh, a marketing team that uh, you know that gets the sign spinners out on the corners and and uh, put some stuff out online. Um, you know, all of these things work uh, in unison to really develop what we're trying to do. And yeah. And uh, so, yeah, there's just a lot of different avenues to get in, especially on the home builder side. And then on the trade side, um, each one of those uh, trades have those departments as well, for the most part. They got a sales team, they got a, a boots on the ground team that goes out and does it, procurement team. I mean, they all have uh, a group to bring these things together. The day of pickup co truck contractors, I mean, it's still out there, right? Some of us aren't the handiest, and so we need somebody to come blow out our sprinkler system or something like that. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know, the pickup truck contractors uh, are very few and far between anymore, and it's it's bigger or, or bigger uh, groups that are coming out and doing these mm. doing these jobs for for all of us. Very good to know. Thank you so much for your time. Just one final question: If someone was going to look for you on the internet, you mentioned a paper you wrote earlier. Um, where okay. where okay. might What's that? <laughs> I don't think that ever got published. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But where, where might they find you or anything that you happen to have out there on the internet? Gotcha. Um, don't believe everything you see on the internet. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, LinkedIn, I, I, I do quite a bit of posting on LinkedIn. You can reach out, yeah. on, reach out to me there. It's uh, just search my first name. And then uh, I think you guys stole the picture from my LinkedIn profile. We did. <laughs> put it on here. It was uh, about 40 yeah. pounds ago. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the best way to get it is uh, LinkedIn. You can reach out to me there. Um, I post uh, post semi frequently on there, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's probably the best the best place. Most sure. of the stuff is internal anymore, and it's on our intranet, which is just uh, just for employees only. So, um, but you'll you'll see me drop some stuff out there. Yeah. All right. Great. Good. I just put my contact information in the chat box if you're interested in the training with Taylor Morrison starting next week. Um, and I, I, I just actually for, forget, Justin, are, is Taylor Morrison doing August or is it September that we do another one trailer? Taylor we're Morrison? doing, uh, we're doing August as well. And so, okay, so the, the training in August starts August 3rd. So you've got yeah, an and I, one, one thing about the pop-ups guys. And one of the things that I'm really passionate about is this is Colorado Home Builders Academy in large part, because I believe in this industry and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that do, and there's a shortage of people, uh, in the industry right now because people get gun shot. And the industry changes so much. COVID hit, a lot of places panicked, furloughed, laid off, fired people. Um, the very next month, last month, um, you know, we let people go in May. In June, we were promoting people and giving raises. So it changes that fast. So if you want a, a, a job in construction, you know, this is a great avenue. We, we'd love to have you out in the field and, uh, and not out, out in Iowa. Those are different fields, but out, out here in the construction field. <laughs> and, uh, and joining us because I believe so much in this industry and it's just not going to ever go away. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Those are such appropriate words. And Justin, we really appreciate your time. This will be released as a podcast, both in video and audio format. I've got the link to the podcast in the uh, chat box as well. It's workshop podcast. Um, you've, you've given us some extra time here, Justin. Thank you so much for doing that. And your advice and direction for those who are on the line have just been very, very valuable. And as we, we publish this a little bit farther, it's gonna help a lot of people. So thank you so much for, for what you're doing and how you're working with us. And, uh, and also I got one, one final question. When, the, when is the class beginning? July the 6th, and then there's another one on August the 3rd. That's gonna be four weeks long, uh, Monday through Thursday, a morning and an afternoon option. Please do contact me if you're interested in that. I got my contact information there in the chat box. Justin, thank you so much. You have a Thanks. wonderful day. Thanks for having me. And la lastly, I'll just close you with this. And I love yeah. talking just about as much as you do, Brian. But, uh, you know, anyone can, <laughs> yeah, anyone sure. can teach you to build a house, but no one can teach you to care. That's, that's got to mm. come from the side, and you got to pull that out. It's all on your shoulders here, guys. Thank you so much. Very, very appropriate closing words. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody, for joining yes. us. You've been a great crew. Um, we're looking forward to getting this out there and, and, and hearing some more for you uh, as we step into training here next week. You guys have a good one. We will catch you later. Well, hey, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed that interview. Uh, just to recap, if you're looking to get plugged into our program, 
or you are an employer that would like to hire our students, please do get in touch with us. You can find me at 303-358-4409 or Brian, B-R-I-A-N at cohomebuildingacademy.org. Uh, we have the boot camp that's available to get your start in the construction field as well as uh, skills trades training as well as construction management. I'd love to talk to you about the details of all that. You have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for listening. I'll catch you later.